In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In tonight's Gospel reading for Tuesday, uh, because uh, obviously the Matins is the beginning of the next day, um, we see that the Lord is challenged by the chief priests and the Pharisees. And the purpose of their questioning and the purpose of the conversations is all directed towards getting the Lord to say something that they could consider to be a breach of the Jewish law because they need that in order to be able to find a conviction of death. So this is very important because they, they got, they're sending people time and time again to try and get him to say something that is going to uh, be a basis for their accusation. And we hear they say to him, well, do we serve Caesar or, or God? And he says, give me a coin. Whose, whose image is on the coin? They say Caesar's. He said, well, it belongs to Caesar's. Give it back to Caesar. It's not, it's not hard. Um, and then he's asked a question by the Sadducees who don't believe in the resurrection um, of the dead about um, marriage on earth, seven men, the one woman, according to the law of Moses, and whose wife will she be in heaven? And he says to them, they neither marry nor are married but I like the angels. But the third part is very important. A lawyer comes to him. When it starts like that, it's not good. Um, and nothing's really changed. Um, but but, but they come, he comes to him and he says to him, what is the greatest of all the commandments? Now, this is a good question because back in the Old Testament times, um, or through the scripture, I should say, uh, there were 613 laws. And the Pharisees spent a lot of time arguing among themselves as to which is the weightier and which is the lighter of the laws, which are the more important and which are the less important. And the Pharisees used to spend huge amounts of time arguing about this. Some would say the laws regarding the Sabbath are the most important. Some would say the laws about the sacrifices or circumcision. What they all had in common is... Um, as um, is that they all had to do with laws that dealt with externals, external appearances and external practices. The Lord, in his wisdom, when he's challenged on this question, points the, the, the lawyer back to the book of Deuteronomy and a loyalty oath that all Jews must say on a daily basis. He says to, to him, the greatest of all the commandments is Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And he volunteers the second most important, because he's not asked. He's only asked about the one, but he gives him the second one. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the reason that makes sense is because all the other laws are there to actually help the, the Israelites to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, and mind. That's what binds everything. The reason you do the sacrifices, the, re the reason you keep the Sabbath, all these things are to do with relationship with God so that you grow in relationship to him and with him, not in and of themselves as acts. But very quickly, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And it's, a com it's, a, it's, a, it's an instruction for us today especially living in a country like Australia where we can often want a comfortable faith. I do just enough. But have a look at the words, with all your heart. Everybody knows the heart is where love exists, right? And um, if there's, we have to examine our hearts and ask ourselves, is there anything else in my heart that that is shares occupation with God? Is there anything there that may actually be even a greater love than God himself? And that even extends, as our Lord made clear before in the Gospels, that even extends to our families. Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, no love can be greater than the love we have for God. So we have to examine our hearts and ask ourselves a question, is my heart completely devoted to the Lord? That doesn't mean we don't love other people. 
But our one loyalty, our ultimate love, must be to the Lord himself. Then with the soul, the soul and the spirit, mankind was made, Adam was made body, soul, and spirit. And it's, what the, it's the soul that, that gives love. Otherwise, the, without the soul and the spirit, the body is just a collection of parts that's lifeless. It, 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 has, it, it can't function. It's so one thing man cannot create. We may be able to create everything else bodily-wise, but we can't create a soul. But the purpose is love the Lord with all your soul in terms of love God with a whole life, a whole being. And think about it, if we think about it practically, instead of, okay, this is work me, this is church me, this is family me, let's give everything we do as a sacrifice to God. Let everything be an act of service to God, even in my job, which I think, what's that got to do with, with anything? But God has given me that job. God has blessed me with that job. He's given me a bit, the ability to do that job. It's my job to glorify him through that work. And then the third thing is with, with all your mind. And this is where we have to understand that, you know, we are constantly reading and learning. Of course, the, the faith is not just an intellectual exercise. It has to be more than intellectual, but we must learn about our faith. The, everybody here has been through catechism with Father Andrew, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. And really, we have no excuses because growing up, uh, for me, growing up in the 80s, to get a copy of the, the, the church fathers back then any of the, was, was near impossible. It was a period where, I know people will not believe me, there was no Google. You know, you couldn't look things up. There was no internet. You know, we had to actually use a phone that went around. Um, anyway, but, but the point is, we have no excuses now not to read and enrich ourselves and to actually learn more about our faith. So although we may read lots of other books, let's make sure that our mind is constantly thinking and contemplating on the Lord. And above all else, we, every, in everything we do, let us always have the presence of God in what we do. With it, it's with our heart, soul, or our mind. Um, and then in that way, we can achieve what St. Paul said about unceasing prayer. And that's why the, the Orthodox Church focuses so, so much on the Jesus prayer, because it puts us back into that space when I, I forget. Right? We all, it'll happen, it happens to all of us. But this is an important lesson to us. If, if, we can, if, if, if we work on no other of the, of, the, of the laws, these two are sufficient to help us to stay on track. Love the Lord our God with our, whole, our heart, our soul, our mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we will fulfill all the commandments by doing those two. Amen.